Four coming to you live from Yokohama Arena, just outside Tokyo, Japan. Welcome to the Pride Fighting Championships, number two. First matchup is Sano versus Euler Gracie. Hi, my name is Steven Quadros, and I'm seated here at ringside with mixed martial arts legend, Bas Rutten. Hey, Steven, back in the house again, man. Euler Gracie giving up 50 pounds in this fight. As I said before, Hoyler, known to be probably the best overall mixed martial art technician. He can punch a little bit, he can kick a little bit, and we know all the Gracies are good on the ground. That's one thing that's 100% sure. Now, Yuhi Sano has got Nobuhiko Takata in his corner. Uh, Hoyler's got Hickson Gracie in his corner, and those two fought in the previous Pride, the Pride Fighting Championships number one. This is the second installment of the Pride Fighting Championships. First one was very, very successful. And so we're back. First match, Gracie versus Sano. And they touch gloves. Now, I wonder what's going to happen. I think he's going to go to the ground. What do you say? I think it's going to go to the ground, but I think that Sano is probably going to make it difficult for Gracie to get him to the ground. So. Uh, Gracie might have to pull him down into the guard position. But I think Gracie's going to... Look how fast he is. We'll see if he can pick, pick him apart with some jabs and maybe some low kicks to set Sano up to try and grab the leg and go to the ground. Yeah, he needs to do something, but it's normally the pro wrestlers are good in defending the takedown. they got some skills in there, so uh, and they train every day, you know, and even though it's pro wrestling, they, they're in, in good shape. And hey, they want to make a point. They want to say, no, 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 no. Pro wrestlers also can real fight for real, so. Well, here, here we, we go, go into the Greco-Roman clinch. Both men down. Perfect. Uh, oh, he, yeah, as I said, he pulls back into the guard. And Sano is engaging him. Sano standing back up. Hoyler got that right leg of Sano cup down behind. And Hoyler got him exactly where he wants him. Sano standing back up. Smart move. But Sano almost pulling all into Hoyler's full guard. Sano sitting up straight, smart move. Going for the butterfly guard. He's yeah. probably try to turn him. Oh, there you go. That was a beautiful <laughs> sweep there <laughs> beautiful. by a Hoyler Gracie. Right on cue for Mr. Rutten, my partner's uh, prediction. Yeah, but what else would he do if he gets a butterfly guard, you know? And, and, and knowing his submission skills, that was the only thing he could do right there. Uh, the butterfly guard, if you're not familiar with the intricacies of ground fighting, is where you put the instep or the bottom part of the shin under your opponent's thigh and then twist him one way or another. Looks like Hoyler Gracie has got the mounted position. Now, because of the weight disadvantage, uh, Sano may be able to just roll. Yeah, I don't know. He's got very good belt. Oh, I thought it was an armbar there. I think he's going to go for the armbar, but he missed. Sano pushing away at, at Hoyler's stomach. Hoyler really staying on top. Now, this is a good ground fighter in Hoyler Gracie. Beautiful, good control. Jump to the other side. Very nice. I really like Hoyler Gracie's style. A lot of action for a ground fight because a lot of people think, well, when a fight goes to the ground, it's going to be boring. They're just going to lay there. When Hoyler Gracie does every, anything but lay there. Coming from the proud heritage, his, his older brother, Hickson Gracie, being reputed to be the greatest jiu-jitsu player in the world, Hoyler's got to be close behind. Hoyler, very well respected for his straight grappling uh, abilities. And Sano, having not even thrown a punch, seems to want to meet him strictly on a grappling basis. It would be interesting to see if Sano institutes some striking in this boss. Yeah, it's, it's quite kind of dangerous what Hoyler is doing right now. Not now, because but putting an arm, when you're in mount position, putting an arm around somebody's neck, because it's the way you can turn somebody. You can just roll him. Twist him to the side. At least you could try. And it's like you said, yeah, he has the weight difference, so maybe then he's going to succeed at it. There's Hicks and Gracie. There we and go. There it is. He turned him just as we thought. Now Hoyler going up high. Looks like he's going for a triangle choke, boss. And Sano Whoa. picks him up and Slam. slams him out of it. He could have been in some trouble. Look at the footwork of Hoyler keeping him trapped. I just want to say it. It's like it's like a it's like a little bug. A spider. He's connecting all the time. Good control. Very good control. I'm really impressed by the grappling ability of Hoyler Gracie here. See, I, I would 
strike. If I would fight a Gracie, I would just go for strikes and take down the fence. I wouldn't clinch with him and do this. Yeah, because th this guy, he should have just thrown a knee straight up the middle. If he knows he's going to go to the ground, throw a shot. And he goes again for the butterfly guy. He's probably going to twist him again. One on the hip. It's very nice to set up an armbar. And Hoyler is so quick. There we go. Watch this. Oh, no. He's got that arm. Right now, there's not a lot of sweat, so it's easy to grip the limbs and hang on. Hoyler is a lot like a rock climber because there's very little to grab onto, but he finds something. Yeah, plus he looks like a rock climber. Look at that. He's, he's so, his, his muscle definition is strong for his weight. It's very, very strong. Very lean. There's Nobuhiko Takata, the, uh, the Hulk Hogan of Japan, and his former opponent, Hicks and Gracie. Hicks and Gracie beat Takata in the previous Pride, Pride Fighting Championships number one with an arm bar. But uh, hopefully that will reverse that fortune. But Hoyler looks to be the better technician right now. And unless Sano, as we discussed earlier, uncorks some strikes, this will be a short night for Sano via the grappling mode. He's going to twist him again, you see? Oh, no. I Look how limber go Hoyler Gracie is. Yep. One little mistake, and he's going to be on top, so... Sano better watch out. There he goes again with that foot, and, and it's hooking. It's like connecting, sticking to Sano's legs. I think Hoyler Gracie's probably been on the mat hundreds, maybe even thousands of times, and it shows. Oh, going for the triangle again. It shows because every move he does is for a purpose, either, either to distract his opponent or to set up a series of moves, not just one move, because... He goes for one move, a triangle, then he'll go for an arm bar, but then he'll go to try and sweep the opponent. He's really crafty. Yeah, let's see if he's going to catch him with that triangle. It looks, here we go again. Oh. But Sano just seems to be willing to defend, but people don't want to see a fighter just defend in a the fight. They want to see Sano trying to win. This is uh, Yuhi Sano's mixed martial arts debut, coming straight out of, coming straight out of pro wrestling. But Sano hasn't done anything, nothing. Just defending it, it, it looks like the uh, same as Takata was doing against Hickson. Only maybe he's doing a better job, but maybe the weight difference is favoring him to help him do a better job because Takata, once it went to the ground, the fight was almost over from the beginning because Hickson mounted him and yep. punched him until he got an armbar. Yep. There hasn't been a strike thrown in this fight, not a kick, not a punch, not a knee, nothing. And it's strange, you know, because if I would, uh, here we go again, fight a grace, you should hit, because that's the weakest, it, it, not that they're weak at it, but their weakest link is that, so strike. Well, let's put it this way, that's the, that's the thing no one has tested. Yeah. So we don't know if it's a weakness, but nobody has even tried to punch one of them. Yeah, it's true. So we don't know that that's necessarily a weakness, because it's not like we saw Hickson or Hoyler get punched and rocked or something. Nobody's even bothered to throw a strike. Uh, they just thought, well, we're on the ground, I better play their game, which is a mistake. A fighter comes in with certain skills. He's got to make the other fighter fight his game. We know the Gracies are going to make Sano fight his game, but is this Sano's uh, game plan? Is this the way Sano fights? I don't know, I've never seen him fight, but so far maybe I guess he is strictly a grappler, because otherwise he would have been punching by now. Yeah, he's just trying to de defend everything that uh, Horner is doing. He should. He should punch, yeah. Oh, no, that was a half because, thing. Because it was a try. Well, it's wide open for a punch. Yep. Because even if he has his wrists, once Sano pulls the hand back... <laughs> he has to use his weight difference. That's what he has to use. Power, overpower. Look at him. I think he should stand up. Especially when he takes the butterfly guard. Now he can get up. Yeah, because Hoyler doesn't have his hands locked up. Now he's got... It's too late now, but... I think as soon as Hoyler lets go, because Sano is showing Hoyler that he wants to stay down there with him. There we go again. Another oh. sweep, a textbook sweep. Hoyler, if there were points, I believe that this is a no-judge fight, <laughs> meaning that if the fight goes the distance, it will be a draw. Another beautiful sweep there by Hoyler Gracie. 
Hoyler basically schooling Sano here on the ground in the techniques of jiu-jitsu. Oh, yeah, and he knows it very well. Good control, even though the weight difference, he's controlling it. He's got the mount, but I don't think the mount is going to be the ticket with, with Sano because the mount works well to ground and pound to hope for an armbar. But with a guy who's bigger, like Sano is, by 50 pounds, I don't think the mount is the right position for Hoyler to win the fight. I should stay in the side mount like this, start kneeing the body, kneeing the head, elbowing, and then set him up for a straight armbar, something like that. You know, and he's capable of doing it, so I think that's the best game plan for him right now. It's absolute silence, do you hear it? Unreal. Absolute silence in the ring, and the audience being a mirror reflection of that silence. The sound of silence. Couldn't be more apropos by Simon and Garfunkel. This is the sound of silence. Boss Rutten, ladies and gentlemen. Boss Rutten, two drink minimum here at the Pride Fighting Championships number two, ringside at the Yokohama Arena. Neither man has a scratch. Nothing. Bo both guys are... It's, it's, it's a straight jiu-jitsu match right now. It's like um, they gave him the... The, 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 how you say it, they, they told him, okay, it's dangerous, he can, he can twist him. Yeah, he was going for the over-under choke there, but as Boss said, it's very easy to roll. Uh, actually, it would be a roll to the left, but he's got to trap that uh, that right leg of uh, Hoyler. Yeah, right now he's putting the underhooks on, so it, now, now he can't twist him. But it's, it, it, it looks like they... They told the, the fighters, okay, no punch, no nothing uh, after a certain amount of time or something. Do something. It's because they don't strike. Strike would be the major key here for Sano to do something to Hoyler. Striking. And Hoyler also, look at him. I mean, he's in the perfect position. He well, out a strike. With a 50 pound weight differential, I think this may be the perfect opponent for Hoyler Gracie to institute his jujitsu. But. Do people want to see this kind of a match where one guy just lays there in defense and the other guy is all over him? Yep. Yeah. No, people don't want to see this. They want to see competition. They want to see drama. Right now, there's no drama. Hoyler is mounted on top of Sano. Hoyler is thinking about an over-under choke. Sano is laying there looking to roll, looking to counter. But if Hoyler does nothing, there's nothing to counter, so nothing happens. No. So then... We have the sound of silence. This is the sound of silence. <laughs> yep, now, let's go, guys. Show us some action. Now, Hoyler's got that knee over Sano's left arm, and he's opening that up. That's a good move, but what's he going to do with it? Because he's got to flip to the other. Hoyler doesn't really have a, a submission right here. If Hoyler were smart, but he wants to play by the rules, he could just put his hand over Sano's mouth and smother him, make Sano react, and then go for an opening. But I think he wants to do this strictly by the book. He doesn't want to use any dirty tricks, which that really isn't a dirty trick. It's just a trick. Yeah, I, I would use it. If it's legal, I would use it. He's going to the side. He goes back to the mount. I... He's pulling, but I, I, there is nothing there right now. I, uh, he's I, not, I he's wonder not... why he's putting pressure on him. There's nothing there. Well, there is a bit of a neck extension. Yeah, but that's more of a chiropractic. Yeah, you can't, it's really hard. To, unless you have the guy's face in your, in your shoulder or chest, you can't submit him. You could smother him, but Hoyler doesn't have en enough mass, really to put his chest or shoulder in front of the guy's mouth to shut off the circulation. Yeah. He doesn't. No, He's too small. No mess. Yep. Yeah, he should push himself out, start hitting. And then it will open up for a nice straight arm bar or something. Oh, here we go, knee right. I can't believe how, how quiet the people are again, man. It's like... I don't think, I think maybe there's maybe a handful of people that are whispering a word, but they, nobody's, everybody's just watching. Maybe they're really soaking this up. Maybe they're that much into the technical aspects of grappling. But I hear some cat calls from the back of the room. 
They've got to do something. Yeah, they, they, they because this is not right. I don't want to see a fight like this uh, for the next 30 minutes. Sano merely defending. Hoyler is too far to his left to go for the arm bar over uh, against uh, Sano's right arm. And he's going again for that neck crank thing, but he's trying. I, I, it's not going to work. The, the only thing that we saw right now is like two or three triangle choke attacks. From the bottom. From the bottom who got defended, and that's it. Not one strike, well, one see, kick. One of the things about the amount of position is that in order to open up the armbar, strikes to the ribs, and then the head or the ticket. Hoyler hasn't issued one single punch in this fight. Mm. No. Here we are. What can we do? Boss, let me ask you this. Ask me. Is this fight boring? Right now it is. Yes, it is. Ask me something else. Uh, come on. Do you think there will be a punch thrown in the next five minutes? <laughs> and we can we can start betting on it maybe like a, a live online bet. Yeah. Fifteen minutes. Maybe this is the sign. I'll bet. I'll bet you a million dollars that this fight will not end in a knockout. <laughs> okay. Now let me see. It's a difficult call because I don't have a million dollars, so okay, I can't Okay, I don't that have back. a million dollars either. I know people who have a million dollars, <laughs> and so do you. <laughs> but, okay, a gentleman's bet. Okay. I, I predict that this fight, hopefully, I hope it won't go the distance because I, there won't be any drama. There, it's, it's just people pay money to see action or to see uh, something happen, to the heat from the, the combatants, um, personal, em, emotional conviction. Did, did he tap he, him there? Look at him. He, he, he taps. Did, okay, there's a strike. Yeah, that's a strike. Does it count as a strike? Yes. That, yeah. that was a strike. It's not a push. <laughs> but he, he did it two times, maybe now. Looks like Sano hey. going for a sweep there and almost getting guard. Sano waiting and almost exploding. You know, where yeah, Sano may have some tricks up his... Sleeve. I know he doesn't have a shirt on, boss. Yeah. You tried that one on me. But he but may have a few tricks. I, I don't think that Sano wants to get hit because he got hit two times and then he went. <laughs> yeah, but those weren't really hits. Just barely no, that's tapped what him. I mean. Maybe it was. Uh... But listen, if he gets all frustrated by two of those stabs, then we're going to better start hitting. He's got good ground control, man. Very nice. But he should use it to strike. Come on. There's that, a... that was another one. Look at this. Oh, my God. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you see? Do those count as a strike? That's the only thing I ask. Uh, yes, they do, but they, they all... I guess they wouldn't count against Hoyler, but... Hoyler's got a plan. Oh, my God. But he... Hoyler's got a plan. He knows... Hoyler knows he's not in danger here. Hoyler can do any game plan he wants. So if he wants to start slow... And, and I've seen boxers do this. Alexis Arguello, one of the greatest boxers of featherweight and lightweight champion from the 70s and 80s, he used to come out there and hit the guy light just to see if the guy would block the punches, and then he'd load up and knock the guy out. He hit the guy light. He hit him light. And the guy wouldn't block it and think, oh, this guy doesn't have any power. So the guy would get confidence, walk in, and get knocked ah, out. Ah, no. see, now, that's perfect strategy. So what he's doing is he's, he's saying, well, if, if this guy's not going to block it, then blast him. Yeah, no, but I, 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 I don't see... Um, I think you're going to be right. You, you, you can bet for a million bucks. It's not going to be a knockout. Uh, but it would be very strange. Now, see, they're getting harder. You can hear the thump. Yeah, that's because everybody's also quiet. They got springs in And he doesn't want to hurt his hand, too. But as I said before, Hoyler supposedly is a decent striking technician, a decent kicking technician. He's got a, a well-rounded array of skills compared to some of the other Gracie's or Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu man who primarily go to the ground and, and go for a submission. And he's, he's doing strikes now, which I figure he's not in a hurry. The other guy's not in a hurry. They're going to get paid regardless. But you've got to think in terms of do people want to see him fight again at this rate? Are people, are people dying? Yeah, I want to see another match like that. Yeah, or that was great. That was great when they laid there, like, it's, it's almost like two insects fighting. Two cockroaches, man. 
A there tail, we, okay. I gave you that one. Was that... Uh, Two cockroaches. Was that Mr. Montana or That's was it. that Mr. Rutten? You An- be the judge. Antonio Montana. Will the real Antonio Montana please stand up? Alejandro. Yes. Alejandro Sosa, man. Well, I guess we could have someone else join us at the, uh, at the booth. I told you, Tony. These two men are just laying there on the ground. Hey, man, you gotta give it up to them, man. To me, they look like two cockroaches laying there on the floor, okay? That's it, man. That's it what I think, okay? He's digging to the body now with that left hand. Yeah, but he's, uh, he's digging the skin. Well, they know they're in for a long haul because some of the fights in the last Pride went 30, con- 30 minutes straight. And they're just fighting until somebody gives up. So the, the strategy is different than if it was like five rounds of three minutes like a Thai boxing match or 12 three-minute rounds like in a, a pro boxing match. So the strategy is going to be different. Yeah, but come on. It's like you said, the people want to see action. You don't want to see this. He can finish it by start hitting him for real. Now he's hitting him right on the button. Create some distance. See, Hoyler is slowly turning up his game plan. Yeah, maybe it's like you said. It's like... Um, Alexis Arguello? That's it, man. Maybe he's setting it up and he's going to strike him hard later on. I... Well, he's, st- he's striking hard and out to the body. He's actually yeah. striking. Oh, Sano trying to post him up, trying to buck and roll, but it didn't work. Hoyler now, he's got the mount again, but he's going more for the knee on chest, not the side mount, halfway between the mount and the side mount, knee on chest position, but uh, he's got the leg up now. The punches, I think, are more for a distraction. Is she tapping or was that a hit? My God, Sano got busy. Yeah, he got three slaps on the back. Good thing the referee didn't see it. Might have thought he tapped out. Yeah. Oh, my, my God. He gave him two back. And fatigue is kicking in in this high energy. But come on, guys. Show me some moves. I don't think matches like this are going to set the general public on fire. I really don't. I think people that are used to... And that's one of the reasons why pro wrestling is so popular. Pro wrestling, people pay their $29.95 or whatever because they know they're going to get action. Guys jumping off the ring ropes, guys hitting each other with chairs, constant action, a lot of trashy interviews. I think it's important for mixed martial artists, not necessarily to go out and do pro wrestling because I'm not a big pro wrestling fan personally, but if anything be learned by pro wrestling and some of the greater boxing matches in history, Hollifield versus Tyson and whatnot, is that people don't just want to see techniques and strategy. They want to see drama. They want to know that these two guys are fighting their hearts out and they want to not know who's going to win. They want to just think that maybe the other guy's got a chance, maybe, but right now, it's, it's almost like, do people care? Yeah, this, nobody wants to see him again, you know, this is like, uh, okay, I don't want to be liked by the audience, let's fight like this. What can I say? What can we say? It's like if, if you were at a heavy metal concert or a thrash punk concert and all these thrash bands were playing, then a band came on and just played nothing but slow blues songs. It's not gonna... Really long 20 minute songs, slow blues. They'd probably get things thrown at them. Oh, yeah, for sure. They're going to get killed. Especially at a punk rock or something. Yeah, because the mosh pit, people would be like collapsing like from boredom. <laughs> I'm not saying that's happening here necessarily. No, but, but the inference is to get busy. Yep. Especially it's pride number two. Oh, they were like, a, it was a combination. Uh, the, the, the full right hand to the... What was it? To the eyebrow. Now, a fighter may say to you, now, but boss, you, you, you can go ahead and interject on this when you, when you want. But I, my, my goal is only to win the fight. I don't care how I win the fight. No, that's, this is not a fight. This right now is two people laying on each other. That's it. That's not a fight. If you fight, you fight. You, 
you fight. But do you think? Fight. But do you think because you come from Holland and Holland has got a heritage of stand-up fights and wars that that gives you a slighted, slanted point of view? No. The thing is, like here in Pancras, I'm I'm um, I'm not only people like me. The main reason that they like me is that I go for it from the first minute off. I'm gonna go for it. I'm not gonna wait. We got 30 minute fights. We got the same thing, but it's not boring. You know, I just try to make give some action. If you wanna preserve yourself till the end, you know, why would you? You know, throw it out. If you give shots like you throw energy away for like one minute only. If he would sit up now, Horner right now, push himself away and just rain bombs on him for 20 seconds. Forget about the minute. And then recoups again, grabs him and takes a few breaths, good breaths, do it again. 20 seconds is a long period of time. You know, you can do a lot of damage in 20 seconds. But they don't. They, they, they choose to hold each other, lay there, lay there. It's like the same thing. He wants to... Oh, I, I went the distance with Hoyle Gracie. That's probably what Sano thinks. Because he doesn't do anything. He's not fighting. He's laying there. Oh, yeah, he taps him on his, uh, on his ribs on the back, but it's not what the people want to see. I go get it. If, they, if they're going to go home and they see the fight, they know exactly what they mean. And they're not going to like themselves either. Maybe it's all a setup from Horner, and he's going to finish him. But right now we've seen 25 minutes of this. And the audience is applauding, which is something I totally cannot understand. Well, they're probably applauding that the fight's almost over. Yeah, that's, that's what I had. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> they probably thought, good. Yeah. Wait till somebody Fine. else. Like, we got, got some other fighters on the card. Gary Goodridge, Marco Huas. We got some Ronko Sikatic, who's was crazy. We got some other guys who we know will go for it. But you know, the worst thing is, like, if you would wait and you think, oh, it's going to be action, 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 and this fight's going to be like 30 minutes, but all the time from the beginning of the, beginning of the fight, you wanted to have a beer or something. But you think, no, you know what, I, I wait, because maybe it's going to be action. And then after 30 minutes, you've been out without a drink, without a beer, for 30 minutes, and there was no action. I see, that's and then you go traumatizing. On, on the next fight, which was totally action, ends in like a 30 second knockout, and you miss it. And I miss it because you went for that beer, because you couldn't see the, uh, you couldn't get the beer in this one. You see now, that's total confusion. Oh. Yeah. No. 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 Well, that's, I, I that's, think. I think what it is is that uh, the public has heard about Hoist Gracie's victories yeah. in the UFC. And they were tremendous victories. He, 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 he won three tournaments. Oh, yeah. Some of the competition was... Oh, this. oh, here we go. Got some action to talk about. Okay, now see what happens. Now, there's a lot of sweat. There was it. So the submissions are going to be harder to get. And now Hoyler chopping uh -huh. away. He starts hitting. Why doesn't Sano punch? I don't get it. They gave him... What happened? What's he doing? They gave him a, I was holding the glove or something. Yeah. I think it's allowed. I guess. Okay. Hey, but the question is what you said, why is, isn't Sano hitting? Hit him back. Because even if Sano had never hit a focus mitt or a punching bag, he's probably seen people hit. And to just to <laughs> go out there and throw a couple of punches, don't start with the funny cracks here. Uh, uh, at least try don't, it. Don't no, start I thought, with the funny cracks here. Just I give it up. Give I, it up, boss. I was. I thought give it was it a great comment. I was thinking, he saw people throwing punches. I think that's a great comment. Yeah. Like, Look he, at this. He's got to have seen people throw punches. Yeah. What, what position is this, boss? This is the, the head between the tie position. It's normally a position you use um, in, an, uh, in an other act. But uh, here, see? This not, not if this is the Black Widow technique. <laughs> oh, yeah. The Black Widow technique. Yeah, that's... Uh... I know it well. <laughs> uh, I've had it done to me a few times. <laughs> so, look at him. The, the, look at him. The up kick. Oh, oh, good shot by Hoyler Gracie. It's getting interesting, you see? Now, uh, Hoyler is really turning up that cooker here. But what? Now what? he starts to hit him. Now Hoyler's this. really unloaded. Now what? You're gonna lose a million, maybe. What's? Oh yeah, <laughs> exactly. You take you take credit card on that. What started off as being a slow, slow match has turned into a, a really high-paced strategy. He match. wants to go Hoyler's, for a lag lock. Hoyler busted him up and, and he got he's got him cut. He wants, Hoyler's just pounding away now. He's going for a 
leg lock. That's the only thing he, he doesn't hit. He wants to go for leg lock. Watch this. He wants to go for like a heel hook. It's the only thing he's going for. But you it's know, the only thing he trained for. Well, one of the greatest defenses against leg locks is to punch the guy in the face. That's it. Bang! Like, oh, good that was shot. a good one. Nice. You see that? Oh, good right hook there. And why the... didn't they do this from minute one? Well, I'm he wanted the guy to wear down because he's busting this guy up now. Hoyler held everything in reserve. This actually was a smart strategy. We were critical early on, but Hoyler may have the last laugh on this one. Yeah, he does. But he can't take it away that it was boring for the first 25 minutes. Oh yes, it was. But he's he's tenderizing this guy's face. Well, it can punch a little bit from the bottom position, boss. Yeah, hey. That's... And it, you know as well as I do, it takes a lot more energy to generate power coming going up than it does going down. Yeah, Hoyler, perfect defense. Good shot. Nice shots. Now he's getting warm. We're getting warmed up. Sano has no clue about how to defeat Hoyler at this point. They, oh my God, did Sano try to punch him? Hoyler looked like he's stacking up there. I don't know. Hey, let's continue a little bit more. You know what? Let's sit in this position a little bit more. Let's try not to do anything. Oh, good up kick oh, there nice. by Hoyler. Oh, good punch oh. there by Hoyler. Hoyler. Good shot. Hoyler's breaking up the face of Yuhi Sano. Doesn't have him in the verge of being stopped. Roundhouse kick by Hoyler Gracie. From the bottom. That was a good one. Hoyler Gracie but really showing his full range of technical capability in this fight so far. Fighting from the bottom, instituting a beating on Sano. I, I, I tried to figure out what Sano's game plan was. Don't punch him. Don't go for submissions. Just stay out of trouble. What, what is his game plan? His Look game plan, he might want to get a job working for Everlast as a heavy bag. <laughs> hey, something comes good comes out of this. <laughs> Sorry, I... It's, it's just... It's a middleweight bag. It's a middleweight bag. Well, it's 200 pounds. It's a, it's, okay. Is that a middle? Okay, yeah, now it's middle. middle a light heavyweight middle. bag. Now that the new... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, what a shot from the bottom. Yeah. Well, this is the, the his knees. The face squeeze. The yeah, face the face squeeze. squeeze. Yeah, <laughs> looks like a kids in the hall episode. I'm crushing your head. I'm crushing your head. <laughs> yeah. Hey. There is the famous Gracie reverse stomp to the kidney. Well, the Gracie just cracking away with that right hand over under. Right when we thought there were no strikes. He start doing it. And effectively, too, from the bottom. Nice. I like the uppercuts uh, underneath uh, the legs. Right under his legs. And he's hitting just hard enough, not jeopardizing hurting his own hand. Yeah. <laughs> that's also very important. <laughs> yeah, it's very important that you don't break your own hand. Oh! oh. It looked like... Oh! oh. oh. Hoyler was going to go for his oh. back. Nice! Let's, let's go back in between his legs, get some more beating. See? Let's go. Now, Sano is in a damned if he does, damned if he doesn't. If he stands up, he's going to take a kick in the face. Because this strategy really worked real good for Sano, so he's going to go back to it. Yeah. Boss, <laughs> Boss Rune, of course, is being facetious. Oh, right. It didn't work because he took an ass with him. Yeah, but why would you go back to that position, man? I'm clueless. But yeah, I guess that's, uh, that's life. Kick to the kneecap. Sano should throw a roundhouse kick right here at, hands, at, at, at Hoyler's head. Jump, jump up, do anything. Throw a roundhouse man. kick. Just throw a roundhouse kick. Kick. Oh. Uh, oh. oh. Oh, let's go back to the to the, the head squeeze. Oh. Yeah, no. Come on. Come on. Yes. Oh. Like, like I said before. Do something. S uh -huh. Sano, yeah, but this is... He's not going to get him on the... Oh, no, no. He doesn't uh, want to be in the bottom of Hoyler. Not, not yeah. right now. Not now. Because he's got his head's got to be spinning a little bit from getting bounced those little punches. Yes. I mean, oh no no! Don't turn your back. Uh, he's going to get choked out. This oh. is bad, bad strategy. He doesn't have a clue. Nothing. He doesn't have a clue right here. Hoyler's letting him off the hook a little bit. I think Hoyler, right Hoyler really. Oh, there's the armbar right there. Hey. 
my God. Okay. Unbelievable. Is he tapping? There it is. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Was he tapping or was he hitting? It because was, uh, there was no difference in between this, the things he was there doing. There you go again, boss. He was yeah. tapping. You know he's tapping. Spoiler Gracie turned that up like he was cooking a stew, slowly turning the heat up to a simmer, then a boil. Then he turned it up to, it was broiling, and he charbroiled Sano with yeah. an arm bar. That was, that was actually a masterful and brilliant performance by Hoyler Gracie. Boring, as we said at, yeah. at the beginning, but he turned that up like a master. Of course, he to be reasonable, he, the, the other guy did nothing. So he, he, could, he could do everything to this guy to show all his skills because Sano really didn't have a clue. Look at this. No, but it's... He could have done the same exact thing this in the first two minutes of the fight. That's it. But he exactly probably, same he, thing. But he probably didn't want to take a chance. He, he didn't know anything about this guy. Oh, okay, okay, here we go. But, you know, he comes from the same dojo as Takata, you know, it's a pro wrestler, you know, you got to take some chances. This is fighting. But, it's what you said, he did good. He, he won did. the fight. I thought he looked, I thought he looked extraordinary, but... At the end. I, I, I've got to say, Sano is not the kind of opposition that are going to push Hoyler Gracie. I'd like to see Hoyler fight some of the other tough guys at his weight. And, and here he is, Juan Mott. Very intense individual. Now, let's see if uh, Akira Soji can do the same thing like uh, he did in fight number one against Henzo Gracie. Well, the question is here, Soji fought one of the greatest fighters in the business in, in Henzo Gracie. But Juan Mott lost to a Brazilian jiu-jitsu man in Marilla Bustamante in Mars uh, via, he, he tapped out from punches. So we don't know a lot about Mott going up against a guy like Shoji. Plus, styles make fights. Yep. Mott won his two mixed martial art fights by strikes, and Shoji got a draw in his second fight and a unanimous decision in his first mixed martial art fight. But Shoji is the hometown favorite here. And he really was impressive against Henzo Gracie. So we're going to see what's going to happen in this. I expect Mott's going to throw a kick. Yeah, there it is. Uh, yeah, let's see. Let's see. I think Shoji's going to uh, try and grab the leg and go for a takedown. Maybe in in initiate a ground and pound type of attack. Looks like he's waiting for a big right hand. Juan Mott should throw the left high kick here. Low kick inside, but uh, or a right, yeah, try uh, to go for exactly. Yeah. The push kick is not going to do it. No, nope. push kick is not going to do it. It's just it's it's hard to grab, true, but it won't do any damage. Push kick is primarily to keep a, an opponent at bay who's coming after you, or to set up a roundhouse kick. That was a good low kick. That was a nice low kick. Had a good crack to it. Oh. Wipe off the feet trick. So Shoji, oh, was his own low kick. Nice, nice, nice. A nice little fake jab there, before he threw the low kick. I think Shoji's going to throw that right hand. Now, now Mott has switched back to southpaw, but momentarily he had his left foot in front in the orthodox fighting stance. Yeah, Shoji should kick inside low kick now with his right, kick the inside of the leg. Mott shoots another kick to the leg. There's something on the floor there. Maybe it's the uh, the logo is slippery from the paint. Who knows? Yep. Okay, there shows you with a jab into a body lock, and he goes with a trip nice. takedown into the mounted position. This is not good for Juan Mott because Shoji has got good balance on top. And we're going to see if Juan Mott can match the tenacity and technique of Henzo Gracie, Shoji's last opponent. Maybe a tough position for Mott to get out of, boss. Yeah, you don't want to be in here. He's a striker. Okay, but um, as a striker on the bottom against a guy who did so very well against Hans Gracie, you don't want to be there. He's got the samurai spirit, he will keep going, and he's probably going to rain bombs on him. 
He's going to try to push himself away, cross face. I hope. Well, this is uh, it exciting. This is Akira Shoji's third mixed martial arts fight. His first fight, he lost a unanimous decision to Kaichi Tuji uh, at the Lumax Cup, and then his second fight was a draw against Henzo Gracie. So. He's really looking to get a win. Juan Mott obviously has the knockout win over Matsumoto and the uh, submission loss to Murillo Bustamante in the Mars uh, martial arts reality super fighting. So uh, Shoji is looking for a win, and Mott is looking for his second win. Mott on the bottom, staying relaxed. He's fully mounted. I think Shoji's going to start throwing punches here, boss. There we go. <laughs> You're in the position anyway, so you might as well do it. It doesn't cost you a lot of energy. Look. Very good. Bad move. Nice strikes. Right, Mott. Bad move. Very good. Now Mott is in a whole lot of trouble. And he's got the choke going on. Oh, he's, he's got, got the choke. He's got the V in. He's got the head, the balance. He's got the, he's got the hooks in. Mott has got the legs straight. Bad move. Good control. Mott is on the good verge control. of tapping here. Yeah, it's underneath. It's under. I think he's out. I think he's going to be out. They tapped okay. out. They tapped out. Bad strategic move, giving the back to Akira Shoji. Yes, Mr. Shoji does have submissions in his toolbox. Choking out one mat. Textbook, boss. Beautiful, beautiful. And he's got good submissions. He's got good balance, good submissions. Now we know why he had a draw with Hansel Crazy. Now we know. Well. He had a draw with Henzo Gracie because he had great, great tenacity, strategy. But in this fight, Juan Mott tried to roll him, but rolled himself, maybe not knowing about Shoji's submission and uh, Shoji getting the trophy. Okay, there he is, Ralph White. He um, had that unfortunate no contest in the Pride Fighting Championships number one where Branimar Bronco Sikotic of K1 fame soccer kicked him when he was down, giving him a giant bubble on his head and they had to stop the fight. His opponent from Holland, boss. William Van Rosmalen. And I'm telling you, don't, this is like a, a, a wolf in sheep clothes. Uh, I don't know, he looks like a wolf in wolf's clothes to me. Uh, uh, no, no, like a sheep in sheep clothes. You know, it's like, um, he's, he's kind of, it looks like he's out of shape, but he's not. It's, don't get surprised. His technique is very strange too. He wears the opponent out, hangs around the neck, hangs around the neck, knees, 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 and slowly but surely they begin to uh, get their toll and then he's... He's striking and he's going to win the fight. You know what they need? A dance floor and a bar to make this really look good because both these guys look like they're in a bar right now. Yeah. The look in their face. Uh, your buddy William, that guy, I'll bet he's been in rumbles on the street before. Oh, yeah. He's, um, he, he used to be a bouncer in the same place where I used to be a bouncer. So There it is. I caught that instinctively. Oh, sharp low kick there by by Ralph. He, will, he, will, he won't check low kicks. Watch this. He's, he's going to probably take a, every low kick. He's probably going to punch his way out of it. Oh, he blocked. My mistake. Yeah, he did check that one. Yeah. But Ralph White coming out aggressive here with jabs and right roundhouse kicks, left inside roundhouse kick by Ralph. He got caught by one kick, and he acted disgruntled about it. He can't really show his opponent because if William sees that he, sh that he rattles him emotionally, I think it could have a way of changing the fight around, boss. It sure can, it sure can, and Ralph White probably will look at him as, ah, oh, hmm, he's not that good in shape. And again, I'm telling you, the guy can roll five it's, rounds. Yeah, it's very deceptive because we've seen a number of fighters in boxing and other sports come in. They don't have a six-pack ab, they don't have bodybuilding muscles, but they can fight because the kind of muscles it takes, and this is a kickboxing match, folks. This will not be a Valley Tudor rules fight, a mixed martial art fight. They will not go to the ground. 
Uh, the kind of muscle it takes to throw punches and kicks is a different kind of muscle than a bodybuilder type muscle. So externally, it doesn't look like the guy's in shape like in a, for a Van Damme movie or something. Yep, doesn't say anything. It's all in the mind. Stamina in mind. That's it, man. But they got the strange gloves on again. Eh? I, I think it's really weird. Yeah, they should just wear boxing gloves. Yeah. Because if they're not going to grapple or do throws, chopping knees there. This is his game. This, this is, is his Oh, he's game. a good knee fighter here. Yeah. Those are the, right on the inside, that's the most tender part of the leg. It was on the inside, just above the knee and below the groin area. Last one minute. Bruce Mallon chopping with that right nice. roundhouse kick. That hurt White. And he checks another one of Ralph's kicks. Yeah, they're throwing a lot of a lot of energy out. Uh, Ralph's is throwing high kicks, kicks to the body, high kicks, kick to the body. You know, I mean. Speaking of high kicks, he went a little higher with that. Yep. Caught William on the ribs, but William moved in a position maybe of slowed the kick. See, that's him, man. Low uh, knees to the to the legs. Later in the fight, they're going to take the toll. He's getting warned for something. Maybe clinching. Yeah, maybe there's no clinch fighting. And which is un unfortunate because the best way to deliver a knee is from a clinch because you pull your opponent into you either by clinching him around the neck, which is the best place to clinch him, or by uh, over under or underhook from the body. Obviously, the underhook from the body, you can't get the power in the knee, but I guess he was warned for clinching. An interesting round. At least they got busy, unlike some of the other fights we've seen. Yeah, this is the good thing about uh, Thai boxing, you know, it's always, pretty much always action. Yeah, well, you're going have to have two fighters who don't want to fight, but... Okay, it's, Ralph throwing that uh, left hook comes up short and looked like he might have landed a punch there, but it's good defense by Roos Malin. Roos Malin with a good stiff jab there. Right Cut. on the money. Right on the button. Second out, second out. Second out, please. Here we go. Hey, yes. we know this Koji, guy. Koji Katao from the Pride Fighting Championships number one, also Yakazuna, a sumo champion from Japan. And Ralph White kind of pawing in. Good nice. jab. That's a nice. good shotgun jab there by William Rusmalen. Rusmalen is carrying that right hand low, but I bet he's going to throw that right hand at some point. Yeah, left hook, right low kick. White should have followed that up with a kick, a double punch, the left, left, bang. Yeah. It's an overhand right which missed by Roos Mellon. Now that low kick caught White on the cab as he checked it. That jab, though, boss, that's that's his best weapon right now. Yeah, the jab and the right low kick, he's making it. But nice. There comes that right hand. That's good. Kind of threw a right hook. Break. He's got a real tricky style because right when you think it's all about the left punch and right kick, comes the right hand. Ooh, body shot. Nice low kick. That was a nice low kick. That's going to hurt later on. You are so right. Roos Mallon is not an impressive looking figure, but he can fight. He's got good skills, good stamina. I think a lot of his stamina and not getting, uh, not getting hurt or tired has to do with the fact that he's so relaxed. Yep. It's like he's going to a store by a, by a newspaper or whatever. He's, Real relaxed. I think that's Peter Ernst's biggest part also. He's so calm in the ring. I think that's one of the things where people see a fighter who's, oh, nice wow. high kick, but it nice, almost, nice. it's a good thing he rolled with it. Now that shows some experience. If you would have left the head. Nice low oh. kick again. They're getting busy here now. 
They are getting busy. It's a wild looking tattoo on Bruce Mallon's chest. Looks like something out of a horror movie. <laughs> I, I, good I thing can't Ralph, figure out what it is. A good thing, it looks like a big like gargoyle or something. <laughs> Maybe he's trying to he put that on so the opponent will look at it and then he'll punch the guy in the face. And he's gonna get him with the low kicks. He's, he's, he doesn't check any low kick, uh, Ralph White. I don't know if that's a smart thing to do. Now Ralph White starting to throw that right front kick uh, that's usually nice to keep, keep your opponent away. Oh, oh good chop there by Roos Mallon and a good chop, chopping knee there. Roos Mallon seems to be wearing down Ralph right, White right now. It's exactly his style. Clinching, hanging, kneeing, low kicks. Now watch, he's limping back to his corner. There's a little bit of a limp. and I don't, think, I don't, I don't think that's a, a ghetto strut. I think that's an actual limp. Yeah, maybe they should give him a, like a stick or something, you know? When he walks back only, he can't use the stick during the fight. But when he walks back, they right away should give him something. You mean like a cane? That leg. Like a cane, that's what I mean. It's the language barrier, man. Some words I'm still not familiar with. But I'm learning. Okay, now watch. Here's the right hand, and that was a good overhand right. Followed and by a knee to the head. And that was a knee oh, kick. It was a knee <laughs> kick. It was like both kick and knee. Two for the price of one. That's it. And then a good left knee there, just under the rib cage. Ooh. Nice little low blow there. Yep. I think that uh, Ralph White is losing confidence. Hey, th and he better start checking the low kicks. God, it's a samurai. It's a real samurai. It is. It and like. they come back out. They don't touch gloves. And there's that jab. Kick to the knee, that was not smart. No, that hurts the kicker. Yep. He's gonna, oh. In the clinch again. Well, That's I guess they... Energy. Yeah. Wait. I think Roos Mallon is going to really blast that low kick in this round. I, oh, oh, nice knee. Beautiful left knee to the inside. That sensitive part of Ralph White's left leg. That left leg of Ralph White's has got to just be feeling some pain right now. And there's another right low kick. When we say low kick, folks, we mean the roundhouse kick. And it's the shin that is actually cracking up against the outer thigh. And there's, it's a very sheer area, and it hurts really bad. It's like getting hit by a little Louisville slugger baseball bat. Especially when someone like Boss Rutten kicks you there. Yeah, and it, 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 um, it makes the leg stop working if you do it enough. That was a good low kick, too. I think that this fight is close to ending because, oh. because Ralph White is really, really just sitting there. Like, like, a, like a ship just sitting in the water. Yep, he's not doing anything anymore. No, he's, I think he's getting tired. One of the things about having a muscular, muscular body is it takes a lot of energy just to walk around and carry those muscles around where Bruce Mallon doesn't have anything to carry around, so he doesn't, he's totally relaxed. Yeah, plus you flex him all the time if you see a girl. It costs energy. One more low kick. This fight go. could be over. All he has to do is load up and throw that right low kick. Yeah, don't. No, don't load it up fast. Still throwing bombs. Whoa, that right hook. That's a tricky right hook. Half overhand right, oh, half right hook. Nice knee. Oh, hey, oh, good uh, knee. That was a good knee to the upper rib cage. Don't want to eat too many of those. Left stowed low, right high. The trainer says. I don't think there's any question that Muay Thai is among the most brutal, if not the most brutal, ring sports. Yeah, for the body, for sure. I really think so. For the body. Because, yeah, because you get kicked, you get kneed to the leg, to the head, the ribs. Nice knee. The arms. After the fight, you need to recover because you kick shin on shin, shin on elbow. Yeah, the recovery period's got to be, it's, it's like a month or two. Boom, boom, they're low kick. Boom. Left he's he's just picking him apart. He's picking him Me. apart. Oh. I, I wouldn't be surprised. Well, I'm not going to say 
uh, Ralph White can't is not going to be able to continue before this next round because he can still go back to his corner. But he's really hurting right now, especially yep. that leg. I remember when I used to train over at Benny Arquitas' the Jet Center. I used to come home, and my ex-wife used to see me black and blue up and down my arms and shins, and she really thought that I was insane. She thought maybe there was something psychologically wrong with me. Okay, yeah. may, maybe there was, but... It's the chromosome. I, you're missing a chromosome. <laughs> like, look at these knees. He's got a tattoo of some Muay Thai on his back. See, the tattoo of a guy, th guy throwing a high kick on his back. <laughs> yeah. He's going to wear him down. This round's going to be the round or round number five. I think he knows it. And if, if anyone exemplifies what we, we, we talk about sometimes... When a, when a fighter is in, it looks like he's ready to stop. Yeah. It looks like he doesn't want to come out. Is he ready? To, no, he's going to come out. But, man, he's not walking too well. He's jabbing. He's got to, he's got to get this back. He's got to win. Oh, he can't stand there. Uh, Joop Mustard is the training uh, trainer of uh, Rosemal. He was in the corner. He said, you go. You know, he's yours. Joop Mustard also is the training of Frank Lopman. Used to be also. Uh -huh. He'll be big involved. So um, that's why probably, you know, they got to have a knee to the liver. Oh. That was a knee to the liver, I'm telling you. That's it, folks. That's it. It's going to be over. He's not going to make it after that. If he gets up, he's going to take a serious beating. Oh. oh, I love shots to the body. I think that's great. Boss, it's over. Now let's talk about that shot to the liver. Go ahead. Size that up. How okay, did he do no. that? The left knee to the body. You know, if you really want to hurt somebody, you give him a body shot. Because if he goes down there, he will be aware of all the pain. <laughs> it's kind of... Uh, a mental thing, I think. But you, a lot of people, when they get tired, they're very vulnerable for body shots. And he did it perfect. He got real tired. He saw it. Need to deliver. Now, th I think uh, William Roos Mallon really exhibited something that we've talked about so many times when we worked together, is that he showed no emotion while he fought. Yep. He showed nothing. He, sh he, he just showed this, this dull look in his eyes. Yep. This n detached look. And that is experience talking. Yeah, he fought many fights. This is a guy who fights in Holland sometimes once a week. And uh, I've never seen him going down. There it he is. goes. Watch this, the left knee. Whack, oh. that's it. That's a beautiful that was, knee. It was actually right to the solar plexus. It was right to the middle. Oh, devastating. And, and, and it was sharp, too. No, watch, no, no. watch how it's crisp. So there's the right knee. Doesn't really land. But this, that was oh, beautiful. Yes. It was right on it's the bottom of the ribcage. Yep, it's on the solar plexus. Oh, like you said. Devastating knee. And you know what? He really loaded up on that knee. He knew just when to load up on that knee. Great Perfect. victory. William Roos Mallon winning the knockout by a 10 count over Ralph White from the United States. Sakuraba on the left with the peach orange colored trunks. Vernon White on the right. This will be Sakuraba's third mixed martial arts fight. Sakuraba in his uh, mixed martial art debut uh, had a uh, no contest against Marcos Silvera, which the fight was stopped too soon in the Ultimate Fighting Championship. There's Vernon Tiger White. And they reversed that decision, and he fought Marcos Silvera in the finals of that same tournament, which happened in Japan. It was the UFC Japan, Ultimate Japan 1, and that was December 21st, 1997. So he fought the same guy twice on the same night. And that was how he made his mixed martial art debut. A no contest in the rematch. He armbarred the much bigger Brazilian. So we've got Vernon Tiger White coming out. Now he's got a two, oh, good low kick by Sakuraba. We don't know a great deal about Sakuraba. No, we, we have to find out. We have to find out. What, what, we what, do, what we do know that he armbarred a great big Brazilian out of Carlson Gracie's team. And that was impressive. That's what I just went, oh, cool. that was Left a hand by Vernon White. And that rocks Sakuraba. Nice. Yeah, Fernand fought a lot of Pankras. I know him a long time since day one that I was fighting in Pankras. I actually fought him also. 
And, uh, but in 93, he fought his first match there. I was right there also. And uh, he's got a lot of experience. And this guy is getting better and better and better all the time. Because Vernon comes from a Taekwondo background, you've got to say that he would be dangerous standing up with the kicks. But on the ground, because, as you said, boss, he's fought a lot of, in Pancrase. And for those who don't know what Pancrase is, it's a hybrid wrestling style that allows palm strikes to the face and closed fist punches to the body. Vernon White has got a lot of fights in that style. And there's a lot of submissions, a lot of grappling, a lot of wrestling. And uh, my partner, Boss Rutten, was a three-time king of Pancrase. So he knows a great deal about that. That's a lot like regular mixed martial arts or what we're seeing here. Except in this fight with Sakuraba versus Vernon White, you can punch with a closed fist at the face. Yep, that's the major difference. Also, oh. Go for a hammerlock there. And nice. Vernon White pops out and sprawls back. Sakuraba going for a real good single there. Getting the single leg. Yeah, Vernon is very flexible, very limber, and he, 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 he escapes from impossible, pretty much impossible uh, situations. He's good. He should put his hip down here. You don't want to be on the bottom with um, Sakuraba, because otherwise he's going to try to do that armbar again, like the same one as he did with Conan. I was right there, man. I was in um, the UFC Japan. That, and that was amazing because Conan weighed something like 260 pounds. Sakuraba weighed about 185, yep. soaking wet. And he got that arm bar, and it was, it was in that rematch because the first fight, the referee stopped it too soon because Conan started to throw some punches, and, and Sakuraba shot him for a takedown. And the referee thought that he was dropping from the punches, but he didn't. Nope. And fortunately, it was reversed. Sakuraba came back. The... Uh, the other contestant on the other side of the bracket was injured, so he couldn't continue. They put Conan back in with Sakuraba. He got the armbar. So here we are, Sakuraba on top, and it looks like he's in Vernon White's guard, or half guard. Half guard, yep. So Sakuraba really, he's got a, comes from a pro wrestling background, being from this Takata gym, but Sakuraba is quite a bit more impressive than Takata or... Uh, Sano, who we saw earlier tonight with, against Hoyla Gracie, he's got the mount against Vernon White, who's a, a Pancrase veteran. I'm pretty impressed here. It is impressive. It is impressive. But it's Vernon's looking, good. looking like he's going to go for an armbar. High again. mount. Oh. He, he, he almost gave him the roll. He gave him nice. the roll. He got too high on the mount. Vernon standing back up. And Vernon is going to show what a striker does in this position. He lets Sakuraba get up. He could have kicked him. Yeah, what? Vernon, he's a, a, too nice of a guy. He's in a, and I'm telling you, he, he's getting better and better. And, but, uh, but Sakuraba's single leg takedown boss. Nice, let's, let's see what he does now. It's a, there's, no. Vernon's afraid of a knee bar because he's got his knee right up and he's protecting it with the uh, other leg, probably an arm bar. What is it? Let me see. Sakuraba's got some grappling skill. Oh, yes. He does. I mean, because the way, he, the way he spins out of the, of the guard into the side mount, well, actually, he's, he's like half guard now, or half mount, but he's still on the side. He's very relaxed. He's probably a good wrestler. Yeah, that uh, right knee is taped up. Maybe he had a previous injury. Sakuraba did have a collegiate wrestling uh, background, okay. so, so he does have wrestling skills, but his submission skills or, or his ability to... Re Refused submission skills and go for submission skills like he was going for the arm bar and he, and he even had a triangle But Vernon popped out of it. He popped out of it so quickly Vernon on the other hand is really an exemplary grappler here as well oh. getting guard there out of the side mount Sakuraba getting side mount nice. again. Nice. Nice little. Oh now Vernon turning. Oh, oh straight down bar coming up. Oh there we no. go. This is bad for Vernon. This is bad for Vernon. Vernon defending well. Oh, still looking good for Vernon. Oh, this is not good. This no, is not good. Sakuraba good. is really, really impressing me here. Coming out of nowhere with two fights. Oh, yeah, yeah. And now he's fighting a guy, a Pancrase fighter. Vernon gets out. Oh, Vernon. Vernon really fighting his way to get out of this armbar. Both hands clinched together. Knock his head off. Nice escape. A real rough and roll. Sakuraba giving his back to Vernon White. Is Vernon going to go for a choke here, boss? For sure he's going to go for a choke. Choke only he forgot to put the hooks in. So oh, he's, he's got rolled now. Oh, oh, and now he's on the bottom. That was slick. Yep, he forgot to put the hooks in. 
up the right hand. Look up the right hand. No. This is an awkward position. Kick him. Kick him, Glenn. Wow. Kick him. Okay, okay. Oh. This has been a really technical match, and... Oh, him, what, is Sakuraba going to go for a toe hold there? Hold. Yeah, it looks like he's, he wants to but get a toe hold. But he'd be open for a strike there from the other leg, in that position. Barney oh. stands up again, you go for the leg. We hear uh, Trey Tellingman talking to Vernon on the background. Trey Tellingman, another Lions Den fighter who's experienced at mixed martial arts as well. Uh, Sakura with a knee on belly position. He's going to go for that figure four again, it looks like. What is he doing? No, let me see. Yeah. Again, He's an arm man, an arm man, arm bars. He likes arm bars. Figure fours, reverse figure fours, and straight arm bars. That's what we saw from him now, until now. Well, right now, we're not seeing any strikes from Sakuraba at all. He's, uh, Vernon's in perfect position to get hit by that right hand, but Sakuraba, <coughs> obviously, being from a wrestling and submission background, prefers to go for submissions. But Ver Vernon's wide open for punches. What you say? Yeah, but I think it's like an, um, an, a, a code that is going on here because Vernon's not hitting him and he's not hitting, uh, and vice versa. So I think, uh, I think once somebody starts hitting, then the defense will come up. Well, it's kind of like the uh, Hoyler Gracie versus Sano fight. Uh, Hoyler started tapping him, but Vernon's not afraid to kick that knee, and that knee's got some tape on it, so that must hurt. Uh, there's some nice kicks. Yeah, those aren't just real easy kicks, folks. No, they, 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 they have some power in them. Those are self-defense kicks, almost. Sakuraba working to pass the guard. Looks and sneaking around into a side mount, almost. Uh-oh. He's going to go for a knee bar? Knee bar or arm bar. Not the arm bar anymore. It's... He might be looking at a knee bar here because he's got Vernon's left leg, but he gives it up because he knows Vernon's ready to counter. Oh, he's, he's going for the, the arm bar. Oh, Sakuraba going for that arm bar. Nice rolling. Nice rolling. No, he doesn't have Vernon White's exceptional defense gets him on top. And now he's got Sakuraba's back again. You hear me? Don't go I don't cross to face right now, cross face, and, and, and try to get at least one hook in. Now this is where strikes would help. They tell him to stand up. Hit him, hit him in the body, he says. Hit him. Oh, see, that's that's what I mean. Oh, Sakuraba ducking under a, a faked kick, going for a takedown into Vernon's whites, almost into the guard. Yeah, that was not a good move. No, but both these guys, I think, are getting a little lazy right now. I mean, they're, I, I don't... Yeah, there's some good advice from the corner. To get him emotionally fired up. I couldn't have said it better myself, boss. Yeah, I don't know, but uh, probably for the American audience, they're going to bleep that one out. Not for video Nobody tape. Me. Last one minute. Nobuhiko Takata looking on at one of his protégés. Kazushi Sakuraba, this time on top, all curled up like a pretzel. Who knows what anybody's going to try here? The pretzel move, maybe. The pretzel move. Sometimes the double pretzel with the sugar on top, that's a very dangerous one, too. Uh, yeah, but, but with the chunks of salt, I think is the best. Yeah? Yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not scared of that. It's too devastating for me. Sakuraba is going for arms. He's an arm man. That's... One thing for sure. See, one thing I like about Sakuraba is that he is, as you say, always going. He's always going for something. Now he's got the mount. Is he going to ground a pound? I don't think so. He hasn't really thrown a strike. Oh, oh he's going to throw the right hand? He should. Hey, you punched me? Now I punch you. We only punched him once. Okay, that's the end of the round. A... Almost like a grappling sparring match, boss. There wasn't a lot of tension in this fight, but it was very technical. Yes. Very and I, interesting. I, I, this is what I like to see, you know? For, for an aficionado of the sport of grappling, this showed all kinds of escapes, all kinds of positions. We saw the side mount. We saw the full mount. We saw a guy take a guy's back. We saw going for chokes, going for figure four, foot locks, toe holds. We saw a number of attempts here.
two guys that really understand the ground game. The Lions Den versus Takata Dojo. Picture there, Kazushi Sakuraba getting iced down. And here Sakuraba's going for that arm bar. And Vernon really had to fight his way out of this. But he did it very smart. He Beautiful. pushed the arm, off, the leg off. He gets that head under the, the leg. He goes, Ooh. he doesn't slam him here. Second out. And he Second pushes out. the arm away. Second out. Round two. Let's see if they turn the heat up now. I like to see a little bit of passion out of these two guys. The first one was sort of ice cold technique. And now there's a strike. Yeah. Both men have the right foot in front, meaning they're both southpaws. Mm. Vernon White with a fake jab followed by another jab. Ah. Yep. Feeling each other out now. I think there's respect here. I think both these men are thinking, okay, I have saw a lot of what he's got to offer me, but does he have more? Can't be sure. Don't want to make the mistake, which ends up in a submission or a knockout. Although I don't think a knockout's going to happen here. Both men haven't really shown strikes that would give me the clue that a knockout were coming. Although I know Vernon can kick. Oh, yeah, he can kick. He can punch, too. He can punch, too. We saw him like that, right uh, there. landing that punch in the first round. That was a good right jab. Sakuraba shooting. And Vernon trying to pull him into guard, but Sakuraba gets had a, a side mount. It's Sakuraba knows some good has he has some good wrestling skills. If nice takedowns, Vernon was uh, defending the other side and then Sakuraba reversed it. It's pretty cool. Are we seeing uh, two different styles here? Is there a pancrase style of grappling? Hmm, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, they, they've been around and they do good in, in uh, mixed martial arts, but um, but is it a style? Is pancreas a style? No, just like, just like Brazilian jiu-jitsu is a style. No, no, I don't think so. Because so many different, like I know you grapple differently than let's say Vernon White does. So there's there's all different kinds of styles of grappling within the sport of, of pancreas. Yeah, but pancreas and um, they will go more for submissions than striking, I guess. That's, but also jiu-jitsu, they say Brazilian jiu-jitsu, I think it's, they like do the same. Oleg Sak Taktarov said, it's, it's jiu-jitsu. And like, uh, he said, what do you do, a Russian sambo? And Oleg said, I'm doing sambo. There's no Russian sambo, I'm doing sambo. There's no Brazilian jiu-jitsu, it's jiu-jitsu. Right. So, uh, and they, they adapt some things, and they, you got, of course, the crazy jiu-jitsu was different, but. Um, yeah, crazy jiu-jitsu, uh, or, oh, now there's nah, a strike. Here we go. Now, I think Brazilian jiu-jitsu, is different than Japanese jiu-jitsu because Japanese jiu-jitsu is like a full karate system where yeah. you've got punches, kicks, and everything else. Oh, 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 oh what's he doing? He's, he's got the arm pretty tight, and he's got the foot where he's trying to buck uh, he Vernon's go other hand away. He's, 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 almost got it. he's almost got it, boss, because Vernon doesn't have his two hands clenched together. He just has to keep hold, holding his uh, shin bone, the, the back of his uh, calf, and then it's okay. But if Sakurab can wipe it off like this... <laughs> But this is okay. Nice. S Sakuraba's got a, a little mouse under his right eye. It must have been from that jab of Vernon White because Janin, uh, Vernon has got a pretty decent jab there in that right jab. Okay, Vernon looks like he's going to punch. That was a good shot to the left or the right ear of Kazushi Sakuraba. Sakuraba doesn't want to stay here. He should, he should continue. Why, why doesn't he continue with strikes right now? Just keep hitting him. Set up, you know, make... He's going for the choke here, yeah, but he doesn't have the hooks in. No, so Sakuraba can bring the. the oh, he's got one, oh, hook, one in. hook. Here we go. Oh, the Sakuraba busting his way out. Sakuraba, oh, oh, nice, very beautiful. Sakuraba has got such a, a unique little style of staying in close in these little twists and turns. I don't think Vernon has dealt with a guy that has these little tricks in his flavor. Yep. Sakuraba is like a, a different flavor. That's why I asked about styles. Vernon is probably used to a certain style of grappling, but Kazushi Sakuraba is giving him different kinds of angles here. Yep. And his, his escapes are different. Yes, yeah, he's got good uh, prevent, preventing techniques too, you see? Yeah, he keeps the elbow low, makes sure that uh, Vernon cannot catch the elbow right now. Uh, good escapes, good attacks. He's got tricks that Vernon may not have seen before, and, and he's got a real good single leg takedown. Let's see if he can make this into a uh, uh, flip Vernon over. And one, one thing I like is that when he goes for the single leg, 
If he doesn't have it all the way, he relaxes his arms. He doesn't burn energy trying to grab it and muscle the guy. Like right there, he gave it up. He gave it up, take the figure four. He's going Look for it Kimura lock. Uh, he's got his back to Vernon White. If Vernon gets that right hand open, he can throw the right hand and hit him, but Sakuraba trapping the leg. Sakuraba going nice. down. Oh, that was beautiful. And he escaped again. Vernon is doing a great job, too, in escaping all the submission attacks of Sakuraba. But if, if oh. oh, no. This is not... I, I think if there is a code about submissions over strikes, they might want to just break that code right now yeah. and yeah. let him fly because they're shutting each other down a little bit. Sakuraba is... Oh! Sakuraba's got moves. Beautiful. Look at this. What? It's kind of uh, complicated right now. <laughs> yeah, here we are in a reverse pretzel. With salt and sugar on top. That's, yeah, that's it, that's it. Right there. With a little lime on the side. Oh, knee bar, knee bar, knee bar. Sakuraba ducking down. He, he just gives his back openly to Vernon White. He's not even afraid of the rear naked choke. Not even. No, but like I told you before, it's um, with the gloves. It's, if you got a normal defense, it's very hard to choke somebody with the gloves. But he's got the hooks. He got one hook deep in. But Sakuraba's going to roll out. Oh, but Vernon's got. He's got he's the. Go for it. He's got the right arm in. Oh, he's got it in, boss. Except for no, Sakuraba's got. He's got his. He's got his chin down. But still, he can create pressure. But Sakuraba spins up. Oh, Vernon knew he didn't have it. Vernon knows how to use his energy e economically. Yeah, it's because he's been in a lot of fights. And, um, yeah, it, uh oh, straight down bar again. He's been in 10 times as many fights as Sakuraba, but to me, this is about an equal match. Yep. I, I would have to Actually, say. Actually, uh, Sakuraba is attacking way more. Exactly. He's attacking more because he's got these weird twist takedowns that he, he goes for a submission and it turns into a takedown. And he's just got open uh, disregard for turning his back to Vernon White and not even worried about an arm bar or, an, or a, 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 a rear naked choke. Last three minutes. Last three minutes. Three minutes left in this really, really highly technical and suburbly executed grappling match. Vernon Tiger White on top, Kazushi Sakuraba on the bottom. Oh, there he goes. He almost got that one. Put your hips down. Sakuraba moving forward. Whoa, nice. Double underhook. That's a good position for Vernon. Now he should knee him to the ribs. Get him on his back. If he can get him on his back right now, he can get, make get the a neck, neck crank. Exactly. He could get a neck crank if he got him on his back. But Sakuraba, he's got nothing doing. Stand up and knee him to the head or knee him to the... To the ribs, yeah. To the ribs. Because if he can lock those hands, the soccer is smart by keeping it down low. Oh, he gives it up. Why? Oh, that was a good position. But soccer kept so relaxed and down low. Yeah, it's strange. We should ask him uh, later on why he gave it up. Yeah. We're here live at Yokohama Arena. Stephen Quadros with my partner, Ooh. Boss Rutten. Good knee to the body. You see now, that's something that he should do way more. See how relaxed Sakuraba looks. Sakuraba going for a Kimuras out of the... And Vernon chopping away to get out of it. Vernon started to punch away. He, I think he felt maybe that was going to lock. And he knew he had to punch. He had to break that code. He said, a little more, a little less punch, a little less punch. <laughs> okay, good sprawl there by Vernon. Vernon pulling guard. Sakuraba stacking up. Yep, half guard's going to be broken now. It's a very technical fight. Very, very good attempts, good defense. I think good up, escapes. Until, up until this point, this is one of the most technical grappling matches up to this point that I've ever seen in mixed martial arts. Yeah, I think you might be right. I, I, can't, I can't think of another one prior to this fight that has been more technical. I mean, you've seen a lot of and participated in a lot of very technical matches, but boss, you were like the, the hammer in Pancrase. They were afraid of your strikes. And then you got good at submissions. Yeah. 
But this is highly skilled. Both of them. Good. Sakuraba loading up there with the right hand. <laughs> Vernon getting ready to scoop back, and that's a beautiful move by Vernon White, pulling out the back door. But Sakuraba could go for a, a footlock, but he doesn't. Vernon going for that choke again. But his legs have to be down low, and Sakuraba has turtled up his knees into his body. Wow. End of round two. An impossibly technical match. Both men really, really relaxed. It, it, it's funny because they, they look like they're not expending any energy at all, but they are. Yep. But it's in the ability to initiate attack and not expend energy at the same time that makes both these guys well above expert status at grappling. He's so relaxed, you know, that's also a key factor. The same that we saw with uh, Rose Marlin. They're so relaxed, and because of that, they, they have a lot of stamina, no stress. Okay, round three. Now, let's see. Okay, this is the final round. They touch gloves. Let's see if we see strikes in this round, because the grappling, they've they basically neutralized each other. Yeah, for Vernon to win, he should go for strikes. Because Vernon, the few strikes he, he's thrown, uh, he's created a little bit of a mouse. Oh, nice high kick attempt by Vernon Tiger White, but he slipped back. So now I think they're gonna start getting down and dirty, folks. I think they're gonna start going for it. I think all the code about straight grappling only. Sakuraba, Whoa. good kick to the body, was blocked by the arm shields there of Vernon White, but they're starting to let him fly now. But it's that jab of Vernon White. And that's the effective thing. He, Vernon's got a punch now. He's gonna go, they're really starting to chop now with the kicks. Both men coming out kicking. It's all about the mind at this point. Whose mind will win the fight? One man has to dominate the other in order to win. Nice. Oh, that was so tricky, the timing of that, because he waited till Vernon to get into a position where he looked like he's going to throw a kick, then he shot in. Perfect. Looks like Sakuraba may be going for a knee bar, boss. Yeah, I, I was thinking the same thing, but you let it go. And I don't think you can uh, knee bar Vernon. It's not easy. This is like a pancreas thing. They do a lot of leg locks. Pancreas, pancreas. yeah, a lot of leg locks. I mean, the, the pancreas fights I've seen, uh, lots of leg locks. They actually took the heel hook out. Oh, really? Because it's yeah, just because too, too easy to hurt somebody? Oh, yeah, everybody start... Uh, breaking their knees, shin bone, <laughs> everything came along, and then they said, you know what, let's get the heel hook out. Now, let's see what's going to happen here now. It's been a chess match, the whole fight. Okay, now listen to the audience, yep. or, the, or the lack of participation from the audience. In this fight, I think there's a level of appreciation from the audience. I know, like it, uh, in all the other countries in the world, around the world, everybody knows better. So, um, do this, do that, do this, do that. Here, they just let the fighters fight. Okay, he's trying to That's put the double, double, down, double, uh, double hooks to, to spring him back. Nice. That was on the top of the head. Vernon has great defense from the, for the strikes in this position, but nothing's going to happen. It's all up to Sakuraba. Sakuraba started chop now with punches, and he got some solid striking. Sakuraba is probably going to go for that left arm in an armbar, boss. It looks like it, yeah. yeah it looks like he's going for that left arm. He's, 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 I think he's going to have to set it up with strikes, so he can't just do it on straight grappling. If he just tries to out-grapple and work for the submission without strikes, it's going to be very difficult against Vernon Tiger White. Vernon has got too many answers to the questions Sakuraba's asking, so Sakuraba's going to have to dig into the striking tool bag and start softening him up with at least distraction punches. There it is, to the body. Now he's got that uh, right wrist trapped. Like, he's want to go for a hammerlock. Kimura, you guys. 
I'm oh. Vernon oh. pulled right into that and pulled out of it. Beautiful. A great escape by Vernon Tiger White. He was in potential trouble there. Beautiful escape. I'm telling you, this is a good match. I really think this is a good match for you and I and other aficionados and practitioners and fans of the sport, but to the general public, they may not understand this match. I know what you mean, yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, they should. They, because the general public is going to say, well, wait a minute, these guys are just laying on the floor. They don't, they, don't, they don't know what they're going for, but you and I being practitioners, we know at least that they're going for an arm bar or whatnot. But technically, you can't get much better than this. No. You really can't. And he escapes the Kimura again. It's, uh, he keeps escaping. I wonder how this is going to end. <laughs> Vernon has all but given up on ch trying to choke Sakuraba. All his attempts at choking were futile. He never even got him in trouble. Okay, five minutes left in the fight, folks. It looks like this fight might maybe uh, destined for a draw. If it keeps going like this, this will be a draw. Yeah, it has to be a draw because everybody, you know, they, they, they put equal amounts of <laughs> submissions in there. So I, it, it should be a draw right now. Okay, Sakuraba got the takedowns, but then Vern got the, the reversals, the escapes. He's got a few now, good shots. Now watch, watch when Vernon goes for that. Uh, now he's got a face crank here. But it's only going to cause Sakuraba to roll one way or another and get out of the technique. Always thinking. These guys are always thinking. And look how Sakuraba defends the move to where he's on top now. Sakuraba, his little moves, boss, yep. impress me so much. It's, um, it's, it's almost like... It, no. it's, is it going to... It's almost as if Sakuraba instinctively knows which way to turn when Vernon tries something. Yeah, he's got some serious submission skills. And he really does. Wrestling skills, too. Well, you can tell that this guy has spent innumerable hours on the mat with... I, 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 if, if it's pro wrestlers that he's been grappling with, then i got to say that they've been good teachers for him because yep. he comes from pro wrestling. Oh, oh, not good. Not good. If he gets that leg over Vernon White's head... This is going to be a tough position for Vernon. Ooh. Oh, no. Vernon might have just rolled right into an armbar here. Yeah. Sakuraba's got both legs in position. Vernon may be in trouble here. Vernon has got to really make sure. Oh, he's got yeah, him. He's, he's got, got the armbar. He's Sakuraba. Oh, my God. Out of nowhere. Kazushi Sakuraba wow. has submitted oh, the entire fight. Straight arm bar out of nowhere, boss. Unbelievable. Bang, and there it was. He rolled, he rolled, he rolled. He kept going back to the well, kept going back to the well until finally, and he's got to be paying him tribute and respect here. He knows he was in with a formidable grappler in Vernon Tiger White. Vernon rolled, and it happened to be the wrong way on this particular juncture. Sakuraba locked it out, he got position, he didn't crank it hard, he didn't want to hurt the guy. Beautiful, he had the elbow on the right side, on the, on the good side, that's what I mean, to finish somebody. My God, who is this guy, Kazushi Sakuraba, coming out of nowhere, fighting two fights against the same guy in Silvera, and fighting Vernon Tiger White, one of the top contenders in Pancrase, rolling around with him on the mat, slowly turning up the heat and armboring him, amazing.